How's it going everybody? So this week I'm embarking on a journey to do something I've never tried before and that is to create a standalone ECU for my Tacoma using a Speedduino platform. Now just to give you a little bit of background, this is basically an in-depth sort of electronics type project. Now my background is in mechanical engineering. I have a master's degree in mechanical engineering and I've worked in the field for quite a while. However, even though you do mechatronics classes and electronics like circuits classes as part of mechanical engineering, I'm obviously not an electrical engineer, right? So it's not my main focus. So I understand the mechanical aspects of a vehicle and I have a pretty easy time wiring in most things, right? Speakers, switches, basics, but an engine management system is a whole lot more than what I'm accustomed to dealing with, right? This board is supposed to see certain voltages and right there, there's so much that needs to go on. So this is going to be a learning experience for me and I'm, I'm wanting to document this so that other people can follow my steps. Now, there's, there are easy ways to get a standalone for Tacoma, right? You could just buy a hall tech that comes with a plug and play harness, base map on it and get it going like plug and chug and start running, right? Run out a map line and that's it. Um, but that implies you spending probably $2,500 just to get into the door. Now in the past, there was an affordable engine management system that was kind of very DIY called Megasquirt. People would buy the board, they would solder all the components and you know, they'd build a box for it and they'd get it tuning. They run Tuner Studio on it and it's still around, but as, as things have evolved, it's become more of a you know, mainstream engine management and it's gotten into the thousands easily, right? And the thing is, you don't just have to get the standalone, right? You have to get ancillaries, right? Like a map sensor, an IAT, a throttle position sensor, a wideband O2 sensor, things of that nature. So that there's extra things you have to buy. So that being said, I chose to go with a Speedduino. So if you're not familiar with Speedduino, we have to kind of move back first and talk about Arduino. When I was in engineering school, they had these little project boards, right? Basically, if your your professor assigns you a project and it's like build a robot that follows this particular path, right? And the robot would be like a little small car, or like a Mars rover, if you will, but like tiny or something else. And it would have an Arduino board on top of it you could use the Arduino to run the motors and the sensors that would allow it to follow a pattern that was drawn on a track, for example. So Arduino is really just a project board. You can develop different electronics projects, mechatronics projects using an Arduino. So, I mean, you could build a simple calculator, you could build the RC car, you could build a number of things. It's, it's pretty powerful for being what it is. There's another one called Raspberry Pi. Although it is my understanding that you can't really do engine management using Raspberry Pi because it's not as fast or powerful maybe. But basically at some point, a uh, gentleman figured out a way to make an engine management setup using the Arduino and that became what's known as a Speedduino, right? So it's basically a board, right, with all the inputs and outputs necessary for, you know, running a basic automobile and had an Arduino board slapped on top of it. Now, as this has evolved over time, different manufacturers have gotten into making boards, in particular WTMtronics. So WTMtronics created a pretty good board for this called the UA4C, and later created an evolution of the UA4C called the Ocelot. Now, the Ocelot has the advantage that you don't have to buy a separate Arduino because the Arduino is built in, and instead of using the old like PC, like screw down type connectors for the wires, it has a motorsport style connector on it. So let's take a look at what I've got and I'll give you guys a rundown of what it is I'm planning. So there's quite a bit of stuff here and it's quite a bit to unpack. So first and foremost, let's take a look at what we're here for, right? This is the Speedduino Ocelot board. So this, right, this teeny tiny little board is an entire engine management standalone computer, right? So it says motorsport grade connector here, and you have a USB B connection, which is how you connect it into your computer for tuning. This is kind of the same thing you see on a printer, right? USB B. Right here on the board, this little tiny guy here, 
is a map sensor. So you just got to run a line of that for your manifold absolute pressure. So that is the board that is going to run the show. But in order for it to run the show, it has to be able to connect into my Tacoma and speak to it. Now, if there's one thing I absolutely detest about the way a lot of people who really don't know the right way to do stuff in cars do things is that they start hacking and splicing wires. And then if you wanted to say return the truck to normal, it would become impossible to do. Unless you, you know, you'd have to hack a bunch of stuff to make it happen. I want this to be plug and play. So for that reason, I purchased this. This is, let me turn it around. So this is what my truck has in it on its stock ECU as a connector, right? It is a 26 pin, 16 pin, 22 pin connector. And it's pretty standard fare. It was very common on a lot of vehicles. So it's an overall 64 pin connector. And my stock plugs that go into my stock ECU will go right into this thing. And that's it. Like it, I can connect to the standalone. So really some of the complex work is going to be running wires between the speed Duino and its connector over to this connector so that everything kind of plugs and chugs and speaks to each other. Right. And for that purpose, I've got this guy. This is the opposite side connection for the connector on the Speedino board. And as you can see, it is empty. It comes with a series of pins and those pins I can connect to wires and then run the other end of these wires over to my OEM style connector. So that's basically so that I can make this entire thing plug and chug. Now, there are other things obviously that you wanna be able to have signal wise into this beyond what the OEM sensors can provide. And one of those things is right, wide band O2 signal. So I've got a Bosch LSU 4.9, uh, pretty standard wide band that a lot of people run. These are not crazy money. It was like 85 bucks, I wanna say. Now, the Speed Duino Ocelot board does not have a wide band controller on it. So I had to order this extra tidbit. This is the Spartan Lite V2 wideband controller. So all of that is in here. This gets wired into the ECU and this connects right into the wideband sensor. It's a style, standard style connector here. So with that, I have the basis for creating my standalone, but there's a couple more things, right? Like they sell a kind of like standalone housing, but I didn't want to run that housing or 3D print one like a lot of people do. I wanted something that was much more OEM fit. So this here is a factory ECU housing that I got from the junkyard. Now they did have a Tacoma at my local junkyard, but by the time I got there, the animals had picked it apart. And it's crazy, like a Tacoma gets to a junkyard around here and like it will not survive. The only thing they will not take is the paint. Sometimes they take entire, like, everything and leave just the cab on a frame. Other times they chop off sections of the frame because they're too lazy to take the motor out any other way. Um, they do so many things. Usually lately what I've seen is they leave the block, they leave the manifolds, they just take the head. No valve cover, no cams, nothing. Just the head. I don't know why because the heads on these trucks don't really go bad. And they take the ECU, which is also fun and there's barely anything else left to get. And they take it apart in the worst possible way. They always cut the brake lines in order to take the brake master cylinder, which I don't understand why anyone would want a brake master cylinder from a junkyard. It's like if your truck that's on the street has a bad brake master cylinder, why would you want one from a junkyard? If you're gonna trust your life to something, you know, get a brand new component, spring the money and get an OEM. They're not really expensive. But you always have those special people and they, they can't be bothered to bring the 10 millimeter wrench that they need in order to remove the brake line, so they just cut all of them, which is extra special stupid, because you screwed up for somebody who needed those lines. But whatever, I digress. Um, I went by a 4Runner that was a 3RZ powered 4Runner trying to get that ECU, they took that ECU as well, did the same thing to that motor. Then I found a V6 4Runner, which 5EZ, right, uses a different connector. So at the time, I took the connector 
and this board, mainly because I wanted to be able to desolder this and use this board to bolt my other connector in. But unfortunately, my other connector does not line up to this, so I will have to buy a breakout board, and hopefully I can figure out a way of bolting it in here if it has the right dimensions, such that I can have my OEM style connector sit here, and this other one was sitting. Now, the idea is I'm gonna make some 3D printed parts that are gonna hold my Speedduino kind of floating inside this space, then I don't want any lines coming into here. I feel that that looks so cheap and terrible. So for example, this hose that has to go to the map sensor, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna build these little fittings right through here so that I have a little piece of tube connecting into the ECU here and then a piece of tube connecting to the bar about there and going to the intake manifold where I'm gonna mount the map signal, right? So that's what these are for. Then I have this little USB-B extension. So at some point, I'm gonna cut an opening here, bolt this to the wall, and that way I can just connect a USB out here to have my laptop speak to the ECU, but not have a cord running in through here and connected there that I can't remove, which again, it's, it's I hate the cheap ghetto-ness of doing stuff that way. So I want everything to be plug and play like, e like an OEM ECU, you disconnect the bar, you disconnect the USB, everything you know, plugs into the factory plugs, you can take it out, and there's no drama. And let's say I ever need to remove my Speedduino for whatever reason, I can unplug the connector here from this and just bring my Speedduino out and there's no ticking, you know, breaking stuff, damaging anything. It's just clean and OEM style, right? Now, I'm gonna be working on this probably for weeks on end, let's be real. Um, I have found a couple of guys that have gotten their 2RZ powered trucks running, you know, on Speedduino. So I'm gonna lean on them for as much information as I can get. I have the pinouts for the OEM ECU. I have the pinouts for the Speedduino. They don't necessarily match. And another fun fact is the Speedduino has a different number of pins than the OEM ECU does. So the Speedduino has a 48 pin output and this is 64 pins. So I have to figure out, you know, what those differences are. Some of that could be, you know, multiple grounds connected here that I would just connect to the same grounds on the Speedduino, stuff like that. But, you know, there, there's a lot of details that I'm probably missing. There are probably some things that the OEM ECU gets signal-wise that don't go to the Speedduino. So I'll have to figure out how those things will run. And for that reason, I'm definitely gonna be leaning on these guys that have done it before because they've already figured it out, obviously. So there's quite a bit to do, quite a bit to unpack here. I'm going to first, before I, I get too excited, uh, figure out the wiring, I'm just gonna figure out the mounting, right? Mechanical engineers. So I'm gonna mechanically mount this thing inside this housing and do all the cutouts so that I can mount, you know, the USB and the map and all that and get it all fitted. Once I get that figured out, then I'll start bugging these guys for more information and busting my head looking at wiring diagrams and then running wires between this thing and the Speedduino just to get it all working the way that it is supposed to. This should be easy because I have a, I'm almost pretty certain this actually just screws in place of my existing um, O2 sensors and probably will plug right into the same plug that's there. So then it's really a, a matter of finding out where the wires go and tweaking them. Um, but realistically, that would be what I would do if, you know, I didn't need a separate wideband controller. But because I do need a separate wideband controller, then I've got to run that guy outside to connect to this thing um, and then run this into where the ECU is and connect it into there. So I'm also going to have, you know, probably somewhere in here, little like uh, PC connectors that have the screws so that I can connect the wideband in that way and then from there have that into my ECU which will be soldered in or maybe I'll use some kind of quick you know plug of some sort maybe Anderson power poles I don't know something else um, I gotta just figure out what I'm gonna use for that but everything's gonna be just plugging into the rear as kind of like a bulkhead 
I don't want this to be overly complicated. I've got the OEM brackets which go here and then allow the ECU to just bolt right into that metal tube that goes across underneath the dashboard. That's how it's bolted in on the Tacoma Zen 4 runners. So this will literally be sitting in place of those. So hopefully I can figure this out and I'll bring you guys along for the journey so that you can see what it is that is required to do this. And if and when I have it all figured out as far as wiring, I'm definitely gonna provide that for you guys to download, etc. So anyone else who has you know one of these earlier Tacomas can figure it out. And I mean, once I've figured out for the 96, then the 98 plus and then the 0104 trucks might not be that much more difficult to figure out. Obviously they have their own eccentricities and they have more features, but once you get this, getting other things should not be the end of the world. So that is the intro to this project. I'm gonna be working on this extensively for the next few weeks. So you will be seeing videos pop up as I make progress. If you're interested in engine management systems, Speedduino, etc., and you'd like to see more content like this, feel free to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you're notified when I post up another one. If you have any questions, feel free to leave that in the comment section. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Mm -hmm.